the Uniformation GK2 12K upgrade kit. And a free castle if you want one. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, you're pretty used to seeing this section of my workbench by now. It's the clean bit. What I don't show you is this mucky end where the Uniform Mission Ultrasonic Cleaner lives. And of course the opposite end where the GK2 and the Frozen Cure Mega S live. And this is my genuine standard setup. I have a lot of printers and wash and cure stuff, but honestly, these are my go-to choices. I loved the innovation of the GK2 when it came out, and I didn't hesitate in raving about it. And its flip lid practicality and built-in heater mean this is the printer I turn to when I'm prototyping and easy printing. It's an 8K 20 micron resin printer, which is the only slight drawback. Don't get me wrong, that's still perfectly acceptable and it does a great job. But we've been spoiled with 12K printers this year, giving us an improvement to 22 microns of XY resolution. So this does mean that the GK2 has been falling behind. Now I do have some of those 12K printers to hand, and I've built heaters. Plus setting these up isn't exactly difficult, so I do feel a bit guilty about not using one of those instead. But my GK2 is already full of Soriatech fast resin hidden beneath this cover when I remember to put it on. And on cold days like this, it copes admirably with my needs without any fuss thanks to the built-in heater. So convenience, or maybe just laziness, has meant that I've stuck with the GK2. However, thankfully, Uniformation have released a 12K upgrade kit. Whether they intend to release a 12K printer or not, I'm not sure just yet. But if you already own an 8K GK2, this kit is an attractive addition. I planned on showing you a fitting guide, but frankly, Uniformation did such a good job, it rendered that exercise pointless. I can say in all honesty that I've had my fingers in dark, narrow spaces many times, but this was amongst the easiest of update fits that I've come across. All I will say is this, remember to upgrade the firmware. I didn't find this particularly clear, so please make careful note, fit the screen, update the firmware, and then carry on with the light intensity. And do change your settings on your slicer. These aren't universally available right now, so you'll need to adjust these until they are. But I've no doubt the slicer companies will soon catch up. And there is one slight issue it's necessary to adjust the light intensity of the UV ray. And whilst this is easy enough, it's not a precise science. I dare say the factories do a more accurate job of this, but even off the shelf, no two printers are ever the same. However, with us having to do these adjustments ourselves, I dare say we can say goodbye to borrowing settings from other folks. Yes, you can use these as a starting point, but you're definitely going to need to be able to fine-tune your resin settings yourself. With that said, using 0 0.05 layer height, Soraya Tech Fast Resin and no anti-aliasing, I'm pleased with the print results. This upgrade means this machine is certainly on par with other 12K printers that I've been lucky enough to test. I've been putting this printer to good use whilst designing a little giveaway for you guys. It might not be for everyone, but I've created this castle come tower. It's 32mm scale, though there's sufficient detail for it to be scaled up if you wish, and it's made in sections. The whole concept is based around easy printing, 
and I've even included internal stairs for the printing fairies to run up and down when we're not looking. Each floor sits on top of the last, with wood grain stairs meeting perfectly. If defence is your preference, you can print this arrow slotted level where sneaky archers can pick off passing baddies. Alternatively, there's this small studio apartment with arched windows from which Rapunzel can let down her golden locks before clubbing to death anyone daft enough to climb up them. And of course, at the very top, we have ramparts for chaps to hide behind whilst throwing sticks, stones, spears or custard pies, depending on the situation. I had great fun designing it, and it should be an easy print, though I confess I struggled initially. When resin printing, it's not normally a good idea to print parallel with the build plate, but with lots of support and sufficient holes to prevent suction, I was confident I wouldn't have issues. But each print had strange lines in certain places. Now I assure you this was nothing to do with the printer, as I did try the print on several machines, always with the same result. And whilst these faults aren't sufficient to spoil the print too much, it did have me swearing at ZBrush, as I accused them of ruining my work. I even wasted the time of my good buddy Juan, by having him look over my files and correct any imperfections, which is enough of a job to weigh anybody down. But despite this, the problems continued, and I eventually turned to the ZBJW Discord, of which I'm a member. There, a kind fellow named Miko suggested that my printing was at fault. Miko felt that as the print area was large, square and flat, these strange lines were caused by weight disbalance, which frankly was a new one to me. But I'm always willing to listen, so I tilted the print 2.5 degrees on both the X and the Y axis, and I think it's fair to say it did make a difference. Things aren't perfect, but the good news is it's not my files, but it's actually the way that I was printing things. I was deliberately staying parallel to the plate to minimise the file footprint, enabling the print to fit on most resin print plates. So my thanks go to Miko and those others at the ZBJW Discord who helped right my wrongs. And remember folks, with resin printing, avoid large flat surfaces parallel to the resin build plate. These castle cum tower files can be downloaded freely from principles.com and you can follow me there. It costs you nothing, it's a great place to find free prints and by following me there, you'll be alerted if I upload further castle extensions or other freebies. So, the 12K upgrade kit for the Uniformation GK2. It's an easy fit and it works. And that means I get to keep it on my workbench as my reliable, easy to use all rounder. And that's it for this video guys. Take care and thanks for watching.